Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of E Church. My name is PJ, and let's see, it is the 20th, uh, September 20th of 2020. I apologize, I've been away for a while, just had a few things to take care of. Listen, today's word is about from Mark chapter 4 and how to recognize why things happen in the world you're living in. In other words, why things happen to you. And how is it that you have difficulty relating to God? Or why is always this opposition in my way? It seems like something always happens. I have the answer. Well, the Lord, the Word of God has the answers. And when I see the Lord and the Word of God, it's one and the same. Because John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we have his Bible with us today. And as always, let me recommend to you going to the Blue Letter Bible. And you'll see I have the King James on one side and the, uh, I think it's the Internet or the new, uh, the new Living Testament on the other. You can get all that for free. I recommend you put it on your cell phone. Well, anyways, I want to tell you why it's important to understand the world that you're living in. Why things are happening the way they do. And you could see it everywhere if you just had eyes to see. Jesus often said, he that has eyes to hear ears to hear let him hear well in another words if you have eyes eyes to see let him see now if you are a unbeliever you're probably blinded to these ta- facts what i'm going to read but the bible says in ephesians 2 that satan has blinded you to this so that you are unaware but if you want to hear and if you want to understand you are the governor of your body you're the one that has the power to say yes or no to temptation or to sin or to good things or bad things, you still have that choice. So I'm going to share with you why things happen. John cha- or Mark chapter 4, the, uh, especially one particular point, Jesus gave the parable of the sower and the seed, or the you might say the farmer who went out to plant some seed. So it came to pass in Mark chapter 4, verse 3, it says, and I'm reading from the King James. I advise you to read it from the version that you would like. Behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass that as he sowed, some seeds fell by this wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up, and some fell on the stony ground where it had not had much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth in the earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and behold, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. So why do things happen to you? I'm going to share with you in a minute. And then he says in verse 8, And still others fell on the good ground, and it did yield fruit, and sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. In other words, he planted one seed, and it grew up, he got a hundredfold back. And then he said to them, now his disciples were with him, as well as the crowd. And he said to him, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. What did Jesus say by that? Anyone who has ears should understand and understand this. That's what he was saying. And immediately when he was alone, at verse 10, now here's what I wanted to get to today. And when he was alone, they that were about with him, and the twelve asked him of the parable that he just spoke. And Jesus said unto them, look at Mark chapter 4. And he said unto them, unto you it's given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of the enemy. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. And then, but take a look and he, scroll down. And uh, I'm sorry, go down to verse 13. And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? Look at Mark chapter 4 in your Bible, verse 13. And those of you who are Christians know this verse. But perhaps you don't understand why bad things are happening to you. Know this and understand. He said, Know you not this parable? How will you know all parables? Now that's an important point. Don't go over that too quickly. If you don't understand this parable of the sower and the seed, how will you understand anything Jesus says? Because he spoke in parables. He spoke truth. So in other words, you have to understand this parable. And you preachers and teachers of the Bible out there, if you're not teaching this, 
you're teaching darkness because the people do not understand. If you don't understand this principle, the principle in this parable, if you're not teaching this, you're teaching wood, hay, and stubble. That's I'm being truthful because it's not me, it's Jesus. Now, just in case you say, well, that's your interpretation, preacher. Well, let me tell you what. There's many commentaries out there, but in this particular passage, the Lord himself, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, wanted everyone to understand it, so he gave his own commentary. Now, who are you to tell Jesus that he didn't mean what he said? Well, in this particular case, he commented in clear language what he meant by the parable. Take a look. The sower soweth the word. So in other words, he identified the one who's sowing the seed. The sower are Christians or preachers who are sowing the word, and the earth is the hearts of human beings. But watch this. And these are they which fell by the wayside. Now he's explaining that those who preach the word, some of the word of God falls on the wayside, on the ears of those who hear it, where the word is sown, but when they have heard it, Satan comes immediately and takes the word that was sown in the heart, takes it away. Now wait a minute, do you believe in the devil? Yes, Jesus believed in a literal Satan. He created him. So what happens whenever the word of God is taught, or whether you hear it on the radio, or perhaps a track is given to you, or maybe you decided, hey, you feel good, I'll read the Bible today. Understand this, Satan will come immediately, Not maybe not him in person, but through his hierarchy of spiritual enemies that's sent out against you to take the word out of your heart. The word brings light into the mind and understanding. He does not want you to understand that, to understand that he is there. He doesn't want you to believe that. He wants you to believe this is just a natural world, and, you know, when we die, we die like dogs die. No. Satan comes immediately and takes the word out of your heart. How does he do that? Well, take a look at the rest. Verse 16, and these are they likewise which are sown in stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness, this has happened to us, and have no root in themselves, but endure for a while, and when the affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, they immediately are offended, and it robs them the word. So what does Satan do? He brings people to mock you because, oh, you believe the Bible, you're reading the Bible, ha, <laughs> ha. And so you become ashamed and offended, so you put it away. He just robbed you. You just were robbed by a spiritual enemy of the most precious thing in your life, the Word of God. Maybe somebody gave it to you. Maybe somebody spoke it to you. Or maybe you just dismissed it. Do you think it was just you that dismissed it? You think maybe somebody wasn't whispering in your ear saying, this is foolishness? That wasn't your thought. That was the enemy, Satan robbing you of the word. Take a look at verse 18. And when these are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, he says, now thorns are, he explains what it is, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Another tactic Satan uses, and Jesus described it as thorns, that when you do receive the word of God and you do receive it, maybe you did become a Christian, but then he brings in trials, tribulations, and the cares of this life and desires for other things distract you from the word, and he's stolen it from you. Do you think all these things happen by chance? No, my friend, they happen by design. What you don't see, if you could pull back the curtain of your life, you could see the Lord Jesus trying to sow the word in your heart, and you could see the, the, the enemy robbing you of the word through through, through distractions or perhaps through offense and a shame and taking it away because he doesn't want you to understand who he is, who Jesus is, and who he is. So he keeps you in the blind. But if you are determined not to allow distractions, the phone to ring, the TV program, the, the, 
the person that just so happens to visit you at the moment you're reading the word or the trial or the tribulation or the bad news that came your way when you're trying to get yourself right with God. It is all by design. Jesus says, if you don't understand this, you don't understand anything I'm going to tell you. This is an elementary thing. And Jesus commented on his own word, and he wants you to understand it. And then he said, the, and then the good, the, the seed that fell on good ground, verse 20, Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown in good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and it brought forth some uh, 30, 60, and 100 fold. <coughs> what does that mean, hear it and receive it? In other words, they hear the word of God, they receive it, and they determined not to let anything steal it from them. Perhaps they memorize it. Perhaps they keep it on a poster card. Perhaps they put it. They keep it in front of them so it cannot be stolen. Now remember, if you don't understand that there is a literal devil robbing you, attacking you, keeping you uh, off balance, Take a look at Ephesians chapter 4. Jesus, again, in Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> Jesus, uh, Paul is talking to Christians where he says, In times past you walked according, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, talking about the, Jesus raising people from the dead. In times past, talking to Christians, when you walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom we all had our manner of living in the times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh or of the mind, or were we were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, with his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, quickened us together with Christ. He saved us by grace. In other words, Ephesians 2, verse 2 say, it says that those, <clears throat> that all of us begin life under the power of the wicked one, the prince of the power of the air. We are his children. And that's his purpose, to keep us, because we were created in the image of God in the beginning. But Jesus loved us so much that he wanted his children to come back home. So he paid the penalty on the cross for us. He died for our sins, for our offenses, whatever they might be, for as many of, and for as long as we've done it. And he's offering you the gift of eternal life. Don't let Satan rob you of that. He's not at a podium in hell checking names as they come in, like some of these stupid Hollywood movies, even Christian plays. He is terrified of hell because he knows the, if the worm dies not and the flame is not quenched. He's terrified where he will be tormented forever and ever and ever. Read Revelation 20. And if he's terrified of that place, we ought to be. So don't let Satan stop, rob you, the birds of the air to take the word out, distractions of life, cares of this life, lusts of other things. Get to your Bible. And what I'm, I'm going to say to you, I'm saying to all, before you even go to church, you ought to read your Bible. Go to Gospel of John and just begin chapter 1, verse 1. Don't worry about what you don't understand. Just write down when something comes illuminated to you, write it down on a piece of paper because the enemy's coming to steal it. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My name is PJ. Welcome to E-Church. If you desire to be born again, which is what Jesus commanded, you must be born again. It is not going to church. Our Western culture has this wrapped up in a bow. It is not going to church. It's not giving good, doing good deeds. It is coming to Jesus and saying, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Would you save me? Forgive me. I believe that God sent you for me. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then go to church. But first, read the Gospel of John so you won't be deceived by every wind of doctrine that comes your way. All scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16, is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, that the man of God may be thoroughly perfect and furnished unto all good works. If you are not studying the Bible, you will be deceived, even if you go to church. God bless you. This is PJ. You have a good day.